Capture of Edgersund The capture of Edgersund took place on 9 April 1940, and saw German soldiers of a bicycle squadron land at the Norwegian port town of Edgersund as part of the German invasion of Norway during the Second World War. The Germans seized the town without armed resistance, capturing the small Norwegian army and navy force there and achieving their main objective of cutting the undersea telegraph cable between Norway and the United Kingdom. By seizing control of Edgersund, the Germans created one of several invasion beachheads in Norway. The landing at Edgersund was an important factor in making Norwegian forces in the county of Rogaland pull back from the coast and confront the invading Germans further inland. By cementing their control of the Rogaland coastline, the Germans were free to use Stavanger Airport Sola as an important base for Luftwaffe operations in Norway. Although the civilian population of Edgersund initially reacted calmly to the German invasion, panic broke out the following day and led to a mass exodus from the town after unfounded rumors began to circulate about an incoming British bomber raid. Background Following the outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939, Norway declared herself neutral. Norwegian neutrality was repeatedly violated by both warring parties, including by way of German U-boat attacks on shipping within Norwegian territorial waters. The Norwegian armed forces were ill-equipped, only partially mobilized, and unable to efficiently protect Norwegian neutrality. On 17 February 1940, the day after the Altmark incident, where the British Royal Navy had ignored Norwegian neutrality in an operation to rescue 299 captive British sailors from the German auxiliary, Altmark in Norwegian territorial waters, Adolf Hitler ordered the invasion of Norway. Hitler gave as his reasons for carrying out the invasion a need to preempt a potential British landing in Norway to secure the iron ore and other natural resources originating in or being supplied through Norway and to secure Germany's northern flank and giving the Kriegsmarine easy access to the Atlantic Ocean. General Nikolaus von Falkenhorst was given overall command of the invasion of Norway. Prelude when General von Falkenhorst delivered the initial plans for the invasions of Norway and Denmark to Hitler. On 29 February 1940, Edgersund had been selected as one of the Norwegian targets for the first day. Edgersund was considered important to secure because of the town having the Norwegian land station for an undersea telegraph cable from Norway to Peterhead. By severing Norway's links with the outside world, the Germans intended to inhibit Allied intelligence from gaining information on the German invasion. It would also aid the Germans in gaining control of Norway's communications and in using those communications to pacify the population and discourage resistance. Capturing Edgersund would also allow the German invasion forces to cut the important road and railway links that led through the town. Further, the German planners feared that the good harbor at Edgersund if left unoccupied, could be used by Norwegian or Allied troops to attack Stavanger Airport, Sola, an airport which featured prominently in the German invasion plans. The Norwegian armed forces were aware of the strategic importance of the Rogaland region, where Edgersund is located, and in 1939 decided to change the war plans for the local 8th Infantry Regiment. The 8th Infantry Regiment had been intended to move to the Christian Sand in case of a mobilization, plans which in 1939 were changed to the regiment to instead focus on the defense of the Rogaland region. As Edgersund was one of the points where potential landings were feared, Arstedalen near the town of Edgersund was chosen as the mobilization area for two companies of Landvern soldiers and a supply depot established there. Edgersund was to be seized by Grupp 6, the smallest of the six German invasion flotillas. Grupp 6, which had been assembled at Cuxhaven, set sail for Norway at 5.45 on 8 April. Before they had set off towards Norway, the troops in the Edgersund force had been told that the German forces would be received as friends by the Norwegian people. On the way north, Grupp 6 accompanied the minesweepers and minelayers of the two Gruppen detailed to capture Denmark. 
Off the coast of Denmark, Grub 6 proceeded alone in the direction of Norway in heavy wind and poor visibility. By the early hours of 9 April, the ships of Grub 6 lost contact with each other, with M-1 and M-9 managing to stay together in the fog and push on in the direction of Edgersund. Opposing Forces German The force employed by the Germans against Edgersund consisted of four M-class minesweepers, carrying the 150 soldiers of the Bicycle Squadron of Reconnaissance Unit 169, under the command of Rittmeister Friedrich Eichhorn. The Bicycle Unit, belonging to the 69th Infantry Division, had been transported by train from their base in Stettin to the port of Cuxhaven on 7 April 1940. Of the four minesweepers, M-1 belonged to the first minesweeper Flitilla, while M-2, M-9, and M-13 sorted under the second minesweeper Flitilla. Corvett and Captain Kurt Toma commanded the Flitilla from M-9. The minesweepers were manned by a total of 328 officers and men. Norwegian, based at Edgersund, was the torpedo boat Scarve, an 84-ton two. Class torpedo boat launched in 1906. The modern Sleipner-class destroyer Jiller was also based at Edgersund, but on 9 April the destroyer was absent on an escort mission to Christian Sand. On 8 April Scarve had been ordered to observe increased readiness. Scarve was under the command of Sub-Lieutenant H. Jelmer Svee and had a crew of 17 officers and men. Sub-Lieutenant Svee had requested permission to patrol the approaches to the port, but had been instructed by his superiors to stay in the harbor. Edgersund was not a garrison town and had no permanent army presence, but on 8 April 1940 a 36-man Jedger platoon under the command of Captain Karsten Daly was ordered to move into the town. The unit relocated from Madlemone Army Camp in the late evening of 8 April by train on the Jaren Line. Landing Around 4-0 on 9 April 1940 M-1 and M-9 sighted Edgersund. While M-9 remained off the port to secure the surrounding waters, the more maneuverable M-1, carrying Rittmeister Eichhorn and 40 troops, entered Edgersund Harbor. At 4.15 the Germans landed near the moored scarve, the guard on board the Norwegian vessel, initially believing M-1 to be Jilla returning from Christian Sand. The torpedo boat was quickly boarded and seized by the German troops. After their capture, the crew of Scarve managed to destroy maps and important documents as well as making a telephone call to the regional naval headquarters in Christian Sand. Before long, the captured Norwegian naval personnel were locked up in a shed under armed guard. After arriving in Edgersund, Captain Daly had established contact with Scarve intending to coordinate his dispositions with the naval vessel. This contact had however not been sufficient to ensure that the spotting of the invasion force by an army observation post shortly before the landing took place was relayed to Scarve. Following the capture of the harbor area in Edgersund, M-1 replaced M-9 on her station off the port, allowing the latter to land her landing force. While twelve soldiers guarded the harbor, the rest of the German troops spread out through the town seizing pre-selected targets. The telephone and post office, the police station and the railway station were occupied and the entrance to the harbor put under guard. Shortly after reporting to his superiors in Stavanger that a large invasion force had landed in Edgersund, Captain Daly and his army unit were surprised in their quarters and observation posts and captured without offering resistance. The naval personnel captured in the initial phase of the landing were later moved to the building where the army men were held and interned there. The formal surrender of Scarve took place later in the day, with Sub-Lieutenant Svee handing over his sabre to Eichhorn. An hour after the capture of Edgersund, the delayed M-2 and M-13 arrived at the port. After all the army soldiers and equipment had been unloaded, the four minesweepers of Grub 6 headed off to return to Kiel in Germany. Some time after departing Edgersund, the force was ordered to divert to Christian Sand in order to support operations there. The German forces attacking Christian Sand had encountered unexpectedly heavy resistance, 
but the southern port city was secured before the Grupp Six minesweepers arrived in the afternoon of 9 April 1940. Although the Allies did not try to intervene directly in the German capture of Edgersund, later in the day a Lockheed Hudson of No. 224 Squadron RAF overflew the area, counting 18 German aircraft in the airspace above the town. Aftermath Following his capture of Edgersund, Rittmeister Eckhorn initially placed the telegraph cable to Scotland under armed guard, before later severing the communications link in accordance with his orders. The German beachhead at Edgersund was initially isolated from other German forces due to defective radio equipment and Norwegian efforts to cut the telephone lines in the area. Contact with the German units at Stavanger was eventually achieved by dispatching a motorcycle-mounted officer disguised as a civilian. Before the Germans managed to establish control over the areas surrounding the town center of Edgersund, the mobilization depot at Arstedalen was evacuated by the Norwegians. Captain Daly's inaccurate report on the German forces in Edgersund led the commander of the Norwegian forces in Stavanger, Colonel Gunnar Spork, to withdraw his forces from the coastal Stavanger area in Rogaland and set up defensive positions further inland. The Norwegian retreat allowed the Germans to build up forces and make use of Sola Airport as a base for the Luftwaffe. Based on Sola, Luftwaffe bombers dominated the waters of the Skagerrak and the eastern parts of the North Sea. After heavy fighting in the Dirtle area from 15 April onwards, the Norwegian forces in the region capitulated in late April 1940. Some citizens of Edgersund left the town soon after the German landing and joined the Norwegian units being formed to defend against the invasion. The German unit which had captured Edgersund saw action against Norwegian forces from mid-April onwards. After capturing Edgersund, Rittmeister Eckhorn set about enforcing German rule in the town. Cars and lorries were confiscated for use by the German armed forces. The local press was ordered to follow the instructions of the invaders and print German propaganda, and blackout was introduced. Although the civilian population of Edgersund initially reacted calmly to the German invasion, the next day, 10 April, panic broke out in the town after unfounded rumors held that 600 British bombers were about to attack the town. Despite efforts by the Germans and municipal officials to restore order, almost all of the population fled to the countryside within the hour, leaving only Germans and some municipal workers in the town. Similar incidents of popular panic based on rumors occurred in other Norwegian town and cities on 10 April, most prominently in the capital Oslo. The prisoners of war the Germans took in Edgersund were set to construction work on the air base at Forest in Stavanger before being released in June 1940. Scarve was pressed into Kriegsmarine service as gazelle and was lost in a collision in 1942. The last Norwegian forces still fighting in northern Norway capitulated at 24, zero on 9 June 1940, ending the 62-day Norwegian campaign. The Norwegian armed forces then continued fighting the Germans from exile in the United Kingdom. In 1941, the commander of Eminus won during the Norwegian campaign. Captain Lieutenant Hans Bartels published the book Tiger Flag Hase Vor about his experiences during the invasion of Norway and the subsequent military campaign. After the end of the Second World War, the German capture of Edgersund was evaluated by the Military Investigative Commission of 1946. The commission concluded that no one was to blame for the loss of Edgersund and the forces based there 